Summary of Rebecca by Daphne du Moria The story is told by an unnamed woman who remembers things that happened in her life in the past. Over the course of the book, the narrator thinks back to her time as Maxim de Winter's wife at Manderley, a big, beautiful English estate. As a young woman, the narrator worked for Mrs. Van Hopper, a rich and annoying old woman, and went on trips with Van Hopper. The storyteller and Van Hopper go to Monte Carlo one summer. Maxim de Winter is a charming man who has recently lost his beloved wife in a terrible boating accident. Van Hopper makes it a point to meet him. Maxim likes the narrator right away, even though she is shy. When Mrs. Van Hopper gets the flu, Maxim asks the narrator to drive with him through Monte Carlo. It's during these drives that the reporter starts to feel something for Maxim. Max asks the narrator to marry him at the end of summer, and she says yes. But the narrator gets the feeling that Maxim isn't quite right, he seems thoughtful and won't talk about his first wife. After two months, the narrator and Maxim come back from their vacation and go back to Manderley, which is now the narrator's new home. The narrator feels awkward and worried at first at Manderley because she didn't grow up in a wealthy family. From the start, the narrator has a problem with Mrs. Danvers, the old and strict headworker of Manderley. A lot of the servants, including Mrs. Danvers, are publicly in love with Maxim's dead first wife, Rebecca. Beatrice, Maxim's sister, tells the narrator, you are so different from Rebecca. This makes the narrator feel uncomfortable. Beatrice tells the person telling the story that Rebecca died in the water near Manderley. It took two months to find her body, and Maxim had a hard time recognizing it by that time. Finally, the narrator becomes friendly with Frank Crawley, who is in charge of Manderley's land. The narrator gets used to her new life at Manderley in a strange way during her first few months there. Mrs. Danvers looks down on her because she can tell that the narrator isn't happy with her high-class life like Rebecca was. She meets Ben, a handyman with mental illness who has lived at Manderley for many years, as she walks around the grounds of the house. A person telling the story is told by Ben to stay away from the house on the grounds of Manderley. The narrator and Mrs. Danvers are having more and more serious disagreements. She breaks a small china cupid by accident, but she doesn't want to bother Mrs. Danvers, so she puts the broken pieces in an envelope. Because of a mistake, a servant almost gets fired for breaking the cupid. The narrator has to admit breaking the object, which makes Maxim and Danvers unhappy. While Maxim is away from Manderley one day, the narrator sees an unknown person going through the house with Mrs. Danvers. Even though he tries to leave without being seen, he runs into the storyteller and has to say that his name is Jack Favell. Favell tells the reporter not to talk about his meeting with Maxim. Later, the narrator asks Beatrice who Favell is, and Beatrice tells them that Favell is Rebecca's cousin. Maxim's friends suggest that the narrator throw a fancy dress party at Manderley in the summer. Maxim, Beatrice, and Frank persuade the narrator to do it, even though she doesn't want to at first because she has never held anything so fancy before. Mrs. Danvers tells the storyteller to make her costume from a painting in the house. When the ball starts, the narrator puts on her outfit, which is a pretty white dress based on the picture Mrs. Danvers had suggested. When she goes downstairs to meet Maxim, Maxim is shocked when Beatrice cries and tells him that Rebecca wore this outfit to the last party she planned at Manderley. The next day, the narrator approaches Mrs. Danvers in a rage about her lies and is shocked to see Mrs. Danvers crying. Danvers tells Rebecca that she's still completely loyal to her and that she can feel her presence all over Manderley. As if in a dream, Danvers tells the narrator to try on Rebecca's clothes. He then opens the house's second-story window and tells the narrator very quickly to jump out of it. There is a loud boom, and the person telling the story sees Maxim running away from the water. As soon as the narrator gets downstairs, she hears from the maids that a big ship has sunk off the coast near Manderley. At the beach, the narrator learns that the sailors from the ship that got stuck have accidentally found something in the water, Rebecca's boat, which has a body in it. The person telling the story doesn't know what's going on because she was told that Maxim identified Rebecca's body months ago. 
Max is the one she goes to ask what's wrong. Maxim tells her the truth, which shocks her, Rebecca didn't really drown and die. He says Maxim was deeply in love with Rebecca when they got married many years ago. But he quickly found out she was lying, she claimed to be good and perfect, but in reality she hated the servants, slept with other men, and never did what Maxim said. Maxim made Rebecca a bargain, Rebecca would live her life on her own terms while she was in London. He knew that he could never separate Rebecca without causing a scandal. She would have to be good if she played Manderley. Maxim goes on to say that Rebecca started breaking her own rules over time. She tried to get Frank to like her, but failed. While she was living at Manderley, she started seeing her cousin Jack Favell. Maxim got a gun and went to the house on the grounds of Manderley so he could find Rebecca with her lover. He knew Rebecca was having an affair. She was the only one he found. Rebecca told Maxim that he would have to raise any child she had with him, even if he wasn't the father. This became very heated. Maxim shot Rebecca out of anger and then hid his crime by putting his wife's body in a boat and sinking it off the beach. The person telling the story feels relieved as she listens to Maxim's story. She had thought Maxim was still in love with Rebecca the whole time, but now she knows he never did. It feels like the first time she kissed him. The police are looking into how Rebecca's body got into the boat that the sailors found. Maxim meets with the county doctor and Colonel Julian, the inspector. Horridge finds out that the boat had three holes made in it on purpose. He decides that Rebecca's death was a suicide after giving it a lot of thought. This hurts Maxim's image as a loving husband. Max and the narrator get a visit from Jack Favell after the coroner's report. He shows him a note that he got from Rebecca not long before she died. The note that tells Jack to see her right away seems to rule out suicide. Jack wants to use the note to force Maxim to do what he wants. Jack calls Colonel Julian to Manderley when Maxim won't go along with it. During the next long meeting, Jack says Maxim killed Rebecca, and Colonel Julian starts to believe Jack. When Jack calls Ben, he says he hasn't seen any proof that Maxim killed Rebecca. He then calls Mrs. Danvers, who is also not helpful. But Mrs. Danvers pulls out Rebecca's diary, which has a London phone number for Dr. Baker. The next day, Colonel Julian goes to London to look for Dr. Baker with Maxim, the storyteller, and Jack Favell. Baker tells Julian that a woman who said her name was Danvers came to see him not long before Rebecca died and told him that she had uterus cancer. It seems likely that this woman was Rebecca, according to Julian. The group goes away from Dr. Baker. Jack Favell is still sure that Maxim killed Rebecca and vows to get even, even though he knows he doesn't have any proof. Colonel Julian says goodbye to Maxim and the narrator. When he leaves, the narrator and Maxim both agree that Julian had always thought Maxim was guilty of the murder. Maxim says that Rebecca was trying to get him sent to jail. She knew she was dying of cancer, but she was able to get Maxim to shoot her so that he would be put to death for his crime. Maxim and the reporter take a car from London to get back to Manderley. They come back early in the morning. When they get close to the house, they are shocked to see that it is on fire. Mrs. About the author. Daphne du Maurier was born at 24, Cumberland Terrace, Regent's Park, London. As a teenager, du Maurier read and wrote all the time. Her parents also pushed her to paint and act in addition to writing. Du Maurier wrote an amazing amount of short stories, plays, and novels. Some of her ideas for these books came from her father and mother. She wrote most of them in an exciting style to amaze and thrill her readers. Many people loved her short stories, and many of her books, like Rebecca, 1938, and Jamaican, 1936, were big hits. Several of Du Maurier's books were turned into Hollywood movies, which made her very rich. One of these works is Rebecca, which was turned into an Academy Award-winning movie by Sir Alfred Hitchcock. Another is The Birds, which was also turned into a movie by Hitchcock, and Not After Midnight, which was turned into the famous horror movie Don't Look Now in 1973. 
Dumoria married Frederick Browning in 1932 and stayed married to him for the rest of her life, even though many people thought she was unhappy in her marriage or a secret gay woman. Dumoria died in 1989, just as she was ending her reputation as a genre writer and becoming known as one of the best writers of the 20th century. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.